We're continuing our study of looking at Catholic questions and answers to those questions, and we're comparing them with Scripture. This is question 27 in a 31-question series. This question is, why does the church require celibacy for priests? Why does the church require celibacy for priests? This comes from the New Catholic Answer Bible. The New Catholic Answer Bible is authorized by the Board of Trustees of the Confraternity of Christian Doctrine and approved by the Administrative Committee slash Board of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops and the United States Catholic Conference. So this is official Catholic doctrine, officially authorized by the Catholic Church as to what they believe. And we're going to compare it to Scripture. So our question, why does the Church require celibacy for priests? They say, an unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord, St. Paul tells the Corinthians. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided, 1 Corinthians 7, verses 32 through 34. In light of that observation, the example of our Lord Jesus, and long historical experience, the church has concluded that the celibate priest may be better able to devote himself single-heartedly both to God and his flock. Okay, the first thing we need to note here is this is not God saying, thus saith the Lord, you cannot get married. If that or it's better not to get married. That, that's not what he says. If that's the case, why would you apply it just to the priest? I mean, why, why would we want the priest to be holier than everybody else? If, it's, if celibacy should be required for the priest, uh, because you can devote yourself to the Lord better, we should require celibacy for all the people in the church as well. Um, but they don't. Uh, it's really, and we're going to look at Scripture, it's really a personal decision as to what you do. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 19. Jesus um, basically tells the disciples, he was asked this question about divorce and remarriage, and he says that Moses allowed divorce because of the hardness of your heart, but from the beginning it was, was not so. The God's design for marriage is that a man and a woman marry and stay married together, the, two, the man and the woman, for their entire lives. That statement of no divorce was such a shock to the disciples that they said, well, it's best that we don't even get married. If I've got to stay with a woman for my entire life, it's best that I don't even get married. That was their statement. Okay, now Matthew 19, we'll see that in verse 10. Matthew 19, verse 10, His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. So right there that tells you that some people can live a celibate life, some people need to get married. It's only given, the ability to be celibate is only given to certain people. And he explains that in verse 12. He says, For there are some eunuchs, or in other words, unmarried people, which were so born from their mother's womb. That's the gift that they have. They just don't have that sexual desire such that they don't need to get married. They can live their entire life without getting married. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. That's what the Catholic priests have done. If you want to be a priest, you've got to be celibate. They're made a eunuch of men. And then he says, uh, And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuch for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Now let's look over in 1 Corinthians 7, which is the passage that is quoted in the Catholic book. And Paul gives a similar idea to what Jesus said. Verse 7, 1 Corinthians 7, 7. For I would that all men were even as myself. In other words, being living a life without a spouse, living single. But every man hath his proper gift of God. Again, just like Jesus said, it's a gift. Some people have it, some don't. One after this manner, and another after that. Verse 8, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So in other words, again, that's your, your gift. Do you have, you, some people are predisposed to certain desires than others. You know, today, the homosexual thing is an issue. 
Um, some people have absolutely no desire in that category. Others have it. And because the culture is perpetuating that, all of a sudden you've got people more homosexual, supposedly. It's just because that's the accepted norm now. And so that's what he's talking about marriage. He says some people have that sexual desire, and it's better in that case to marry than to burn with that sexual desire. Others don't have that, so in their case, it's better to stay single. In other words, this is a personal decision. It's not a mandate that the Catholic Church can say, if you want to be a priest, you got to be celibate. That's not a mandate. It's a personal decision. Uh, so that's what we see from Matthew 19 and also 1 Corinthians 7. One thing I want to note uh, that's interesting is just a few questions ago, there was, uh, we addressed the, uh, the idea of, let's see, it was why are sacraments necessary? They say, the Catholics say that a sacrament is a sign of God's presence. And, and of this, there are seven sacraments, they say, one of those is matrimony. So, they contradict themselves in making the priest celibate. In other words, they say these sacraments, baptism, reconciliation, confirmation, matrimony, holy orders, and the anointing of the sick, are a sign of God's presence. So if you go through these sacraments, that's a sign that God is with you. You're closer to God as a result of going through these sacraments. So they say you're closer to God if you get married, because that's one of the sacraments. But yet for their priests, they say they have to be celibate. So even by their own definition, someone who, if you want to be close to God uh, by a Catholic definition, then you need to not be a priest because a priest has to be celibate. You can't go through matrimony, which would make you close to God. So they've contradicted their own doctrine right there. Of course, there are no such things as seven sacraments. There's none of that. So we know that's not true. What's true about when it comes to marriage is that it's a personal decision based upon your own desire. And if you have that sexual desire, you need to get married. If you don't, then you don't. That's what you should do. But it's up to the individual. And there is also the recognition in God's Word that most people will have that desire and most people will get married. We look over in 1 Timothy 3. And we can see that because, interestingly enough, we're going through qualifications of a bishop in 1 Timothy 3. And it says in verse 2... 1 Timothy 3, 2, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Well, Catholics have bishops. Why would they require them to be celibate if it says here to be the husband of one wife? Uh, verse 12, you can see with the deacons, 1 Timothy 3, 12, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. So you see that again, church leaders, um, not that you have to be married, but church leaders, it's assumed that you will, and if you are married, you're only, you're a one-woman man. You're either a no-woman man or a one-woman man. Look also in Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. So again, uh, stated in God's Word here that it is assumed that your leaders are going to be married and the assumption is really it's not don't get married it's we assume that most people will need to get married and so then don't go the other way don't have multiple wives don't uh, be involved in sexual fornication but just be a one woman man um, so uh, there you know it's interesting that the Catholics will use qualifications of bishops in 1 Timothy 3, but yet when it comes to celibacy, you know, they don't quote 1 Timothy 3 because it says husband of one wife having faithful children. Uh, okay, so let's go back to what the Catholics say. Uh, so they say that the celibate priest may be better able to devote himself single-heartedly both to God and his flock. Uh, again, we've seen based on who you are inside your desires as to if that's a true statement or not should be a personal decision. Okay, Catholics continue to say, we should note that the church holds celibacy as the disciplinary norm of practice for priests. She allows for some exceptions. Many ancient priests and even bishops had a wife at some point, including the first Pope, St. Peter. Matthew 8, 14 speaks of his mother-in-law. Today, many Catholic priests of the Eastern Rite are married, 
and even in the Roman Rite, a handful of married men, usually clergy converts from a non-Catholic Christian tradition, have been given a special dispensation by Rome to be ordained as priests. So again, the, the idea here is even though they allow marriage in some cases, it's this special dispensation, or it's the Catholic Church being in control when God's Word says this is a personal decision. If you burn, get married. If you don't burn, don't get married. That's the right way of thinking through this. But instead, the Catholic Church just says, we require you to be celibate, and if you want to get away from that, you've got to get a special dispensation from us. We've got to approve it. Uh, it makes them God rather than God's Word being God. Okay, continuing what they say, the Church doesn't teach as a part of the Catholic faith, then, that celibacy is an inherent quality of priesthood, part of its essence. But as St. Paul observes, celibacy has distinct advantages for the man who must give himself wholly to God in ministry to his church. Uh, Paul, when he's going over 1 Corinthians 7, he's, not ta he's talking to carnal Christians. He's not talking to the man who would give himself wholly to God as a church leader. He's talking to everybody. The rules in 1 Corinthians 7 apply to everybody. And he's saying that uh, if you don't burn a sexual desire, everybody should want to give themselves wholly to God. doesn't mean you're going to be a priest, but it should, you should present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, Romans 12.1. That's a command for every member of the body of Christ, man or woman, leader or not. And you give yourself wholly over to God by recognizing the desire within you to see if it's appropriate if you should get married or not. It's not that, oh, only the priests are going to give themselves holy to God. These other laymen, um, they're not giving themselves holy to God so they can get married and somehow be less of a Christian. Even though we've said that matrimony is a sign of God's presence. So again, they contradict themselves. We'll continue. They say opponents of celibacy often simply assume that such a life is utterly impossible. But St. Paul undeniably teaches the contrary, and our Lord speaks without criticism of those who have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And we've gone over that. Celibacy is both a matter of personal choice, oh, they finally admit that, and on a deeper level, an acceptance of God's calling. Wait a minute, no, he didn't say that he requires them to be celibate. We've already read 1 Timothy 3. In fact, let's look at that passage again, because I want you to see verse 1. 1 Timothy 3, 1, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. It shows God doesn't call somebody and say, thus saith the Lord, you are to be a bishop. It shows that it's a desire that someone has based on what they see when they're in Christ, how can I serve the Lord best? And when they see their level of qualifications meet this and they see the need for that, then they should desire the office. It's not a calling. And it's a matter of personal choice. And we see from verse 2, as we read earlier, a bishop that must be blameless, the husband of one wife, which shows again celibacy is not a requirement for this office. Bishop, to be a bishop, you should desire that. And if you desire that, then you're just whoever you are. If you're married or not, you just be that person and meet these qualifications. Uh, it's a desire. Also, uh, as far as God's calling, look over in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Paul tells the Galatians, Galatians 5, 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage is rule, saying you can or cannot do this. Verse 2 says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. In the Galatians case, you had people coming in saying you must be circumcised in order to serve God. They're putting a law on them. And Paul says, stand fast in your liberty. Don't listen to these people who are trying to get you circumcised. Similarly, God would say the same thing for Catholic priests. He would say, don't try to go along with the Catholics that are saying you must stay celibate in order to be a priest. Stand fast in your liberty. Don't be entangled with that yoke of bondage. And in fact, if you want the, a, a particular case like that, he even mentions that over in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, 1 Timothy 4, 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. 
Um, he says, refuse those things. Verse 7, refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So here are some people forbidding to marry, just like the Catholic priest, uh, the Catholic Church saying, if you want to be a priest, you are forbidden to marry. But Paul says, stand fast in your liberty. Don't be entangled in that yoke of bondage and make the personal decision if you're going to be married or not. And don't be subject to a law of some church man-made rule of forbidding to marry. Okay, going back to what the Catholics say, celibacy is both a matter of personal choice, which is true, and on a deeper level, an acceptance of God's calling, and we've seen that's not true. St. Paul acknowledges the divine impetus, as well as the free will initiative of human beings in the matter. If a man is called to celibacy, he will be given both the desire and the ability to carry out this way of life successfully. See Philippians 2.13. Let's look over in Philippians 2.13, and what we're going to find is that verse has nothing to do with marriage and celibacy. Uh, it says, let's look back at verse 12, Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Well, his will, according to 1 Timothy 2.4, is for all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. His will, it doesn't say anywhere, thus saith the Lord, you shall not get married. Um, we already read 1 Corinthians 7 and shall see that that was a personal decision. So God working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure has to do with you reading the doctrine found in Paul's epistles, believing that and allow Christ living in you to work it out practically in your daily living. It's not following a list of rules and regulations that a church um, puts up. So this desire and ability to carry out this way of life successfully is not supported by Scripture uh, and certainly not by Philippians 2.13. Finally, we should note that the Catholic Church does not in any sense reject marriage or sexuality as long as these remain within the proper biblical and moral guidelines. According to the Catholic faith, marriage and ordination are both sacraments, both positive and wonderful means of God's grace. So again, uh, they've even shown that they contradict themselves, that matrimony is a wonderful means of God's grace, except for Catholic priests. Who needs God's grace more than people who are closer to God? Because you, you are teaching God's word to people, you are instructing them in the ways of the Lord, uh, you need to be more in tune with God, be in touch with His grace and His mercy toward you and the doctrine that's in Scripture. Uh, so if matrimony is a way to get closer to God, why would they forbid the ones who are supposedly closer to God, the leaders, from partaking in that? Uh, it's just like 1 Timothy 4.3 says. It's forbidding to marry is a commandment of men that is profane and vain babblings. It is not God and His Word. God and His Word says it's a personal decision. And God even expects leaders of the church to be the husband of one wife, both bishops and deacons. Um, but again, it's a personal decision. So that was question number 27. Our next question, uh, question number 28, will be, why does the church have bishops? So we'll cover that next time.